played seven guys there. How do you feel about the way they control the line of scrimmage against Kent State? I thought they did a good, good job being disruptive. I think we had 14 tackles for losses and three sacks, and those are good, good numbers. Uh, and at the same time, understand that there's a lot of room for improvement across the board. Uh, but uh, was was pleased for how they played, and uh, again, just ready to go back to work and get better this week. Isaiah Coe got the, the start for you. How do you feel about the way he's kind of matured and played through the first couple of games? He's getting better. Uh, he's had a, he had a great summer, uh, and then has has worked extremely hard. And he's seen some of the fruits of his labor pay off, and he's he's getting better and pleased with him because you know you can't have enough of those guys that play in the trenches and they're disruptive. It's, it's impossible. You cannot have enough of that. Yeah, uh, Ted. In the first half, there were times where you took Danny and David out, Damon and Justin. And what was it about that package or about those guys together specifically that you guys really want to see? Well, it was just game, some game plan specific stuff. You know, there are going to be some wrinkles uh, and tweak your game plan each and every week. And uh, that was just what the, the package that we thought we needed to, to play at that particular time to stop what they were doing. And, uh, you know, there were some, some, some good things coming. We, we alternated a lot in that package, you know. So, but yeah, you saw that, and that was just game plan specific stuff. Talked a lot about Reggie these last couple of weeks, but from the time you got here to now, where have you seen him elevate his game? I think he's uh, more disruptive. He's more aggressive. Uh, he's playing faster, uh, and he's been really consistent. And uh, so those are the areas that I've seen a lot of growth in. And I think he's playing with some confidence. And you know, confidence is such a powerful thing. But his confidence is coming because of his preparation that he's taken into the game field and performance, which leads to confidence. And uh, he's done a good job. We're real proud of him and expect him to continue to work to get better. Are there changes that you've seen in that preparation that have built that confidence? Uh, as far as changes, well, I wasn't with him last year. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know about I, I, I don't play the compare game. All I know is that I've been really pleased with what I've seen with Reggie since I've been here. And as, as a result of that, you see the, you see the production pay off. Yeah. Casey Thompson, you know, in his first year there, now they've had this coaching change and things, but Mickey Joseph's been there. So, you know, what do you expect out of Nebraska offensively? What's your thoughts on Casey and quarterback? Well, I expect their best. Uh, you know, we get everybody's best. And uh, they've, they've done a good job. They're averaging 36 points a game, um, you know, moving the ball, both running and throwing. Uh, and obviously he's a mobile, mobile quarterback. Uh, he extends plays with his feet and his legs. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of respect for him, and, and we know it's going to be a challenge. Coach, you've uh, coached a lot of years. And just from an outsider's perspective, this OU Nebraska rivalry, what's it meant to you? What have you remembered? Over the Here's years. what I remember since you brought it up, okay? When I was a kid, there were about two or three college football games on per weekend, and that's all. And every time OU and Nebraska played, that was one of those games on that weekend. And the, the national, uh, the implications that it had, the prominence that it had, the importance that it had on college football. You know, th th like I said, that was a game that I watched every year when I was a kid uh, because it always impacted the, the national rankings. to want to go back to the defensive line and, and Jalen Redmond. What what kind of progress did you see from him from uh, week one to week two? And, and do you feel like he's close to being the player that you anticipated him being you know, before he got a little bit banged up in camp? Yeah, well, you know, it was unfortunate that he got banged up a little bit in camp. But at the same time, uh, his growth and his development and, uh, you know, between the partnership between he and Coach Bates uh, has been – uh, obviously a, a big deal and I think there's a lot of trust there and a lot of buy-in and uh, you know he played certainly played well and uh, you know want to see him continue to grow and develop and and uh, and produce more and more every week you know but I thought he did a good job Saturday night. And then how do you feel about the depth there and, and being able to rotate guys especially on that interior of the defensive line? Well I think that's the, you look at the really good teams across the country They've got depth along the lines of the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, that's something that, that, that right now we have. And that's, uh, that's a good thing because, you know, those guys, you know, the, the, the strain that they have to play with, with, you know, 
snaps where there's 650 or 700 pounds leaning on them and trying to get off blocks. And I mean, it's a war in there. And uh, it's, it's a physical fight every snap. It's not like some other positions where you may or may not have contact. There's contact in there every single snap. So to have depth and to be able to, to rotate guys and keep guys as fresh as we can keep them is, is something that we value a lot. The situation with them changing coaches during game week, is that you get a sense that that's a chance for them to sort of get you know, reinvigorated and you expect even a, a more inspired Nebraska team Saturday, or does that work in your favor because of, of you know chaos that's going on up there? Our approach is that we expect everybody's best, and we expect to get their best. I know this that uh, I, again they've had a great season offensively and they're scoring points and, and, and moving the ball. And uh, you know Mark Whipple's had a lot of success wherever he's been, calling plays. And uh, you know we expect their best, and so we got to make sure we're ready to, to give our best. Yeah, same subject matter, but when you prepare for a team that makes a coaching change, is there any way to prepare for that, or do you just have to go by what you've seen on tape, especially you on defense? I mean, Frost was an offensive guy. Is there guesswork involved? How do you, how do you approach a week like this? There's guesswork every week. You know, you go back and you do your research and your preparation. Uh, you do it in depth, especially in your early season games where you have some off-season time to to devote some time to that, more time to that. But uh, uh, again, uh, whether it works in our favor or not, I, I don't know about all that. I just want to get our guys ready to play our best. And uh, that's, that's, that's our mission this week, starting with today. Hey, Ted, wanted to ask you about uh, Billy Bowman. He's got 20 tackles through two games. He had the, the forced fumble on Saturday. Just what, that was what, a huge play. That was a huge play in the game force fumble and the recovery. Uh, that was a big, big time momentum play right there. What have you seen from him, and especially that aggressiveness? It seemed like he's been involved in a lot of plays. Just what have you seen from him? I've seen him. I've seen his confidence grow. And as a result of that, because Billy is extremely talented, he, he works hard at the game off the field as well. But I've seen his level of confidence increase. And as a result of that, see him play faster and play aggressive. And, uh, you know, I've been really, really pleased with how Billy's performed this year. Justin Harrington's interception. How big was that for his confidence? I think it was great for his confidence. It was great for our football team. Uh, you know, to see a guy that, like I said, had, you know, had some ups and downs in his career to, uh, to, to get a lot of meaningful snaps on Saturday night and uh, end it with, a, with an interception. I was really happy for him and uh, happy for us, you know, but uh, proud of him. Quarterback on Saturday, uh, Kent State quarterback Sleet looked slippery. He got away from uh, guys. That's in, because he was. Yeah. <laughs> because he was, yeah. he was wearing extra tight jersey or something. We we knew he was a, a really a mobile, athletic guy from our tape evaluation of him, and we knew he could make all the throws. And uh, you know he did a, he did a great job and made us miss at times. And uh, that's an issue that we we've got to. Work to clean up is uh, missed tackles. You know, our, our tackle on Saturday night wasn't where we expected it to be. And as a result of that, you know, it extended some plays and extended some drives. And it, it, but, you know, part of that is us, but I give that kid, kid credit too, you know. So, uh, but we've got to do a better job defensively of the tracking angles, finishing plays, putting people on the proper pad, and uh, the second guy in having a uh, ball awareness after the first guy secured the tackle the second guy's got to have a ball awareness like billy did that was the exact example of what we of what we work you know where the first guy secured the tackle and then billy was the second guy there and uh, and ripped the ball out so that's a that's something that we've got a lot of work to do yes so that's the norm now in college football is to have a quarterback who can move a little bit escape a little bit what does that do to a defense when you're out there and you beat your man you get to the quarterback you almost get him down and he gets away is it, can it be demoralizing if Kind of stay with the process. How does that work? Well, you're certainly not happy about it, you know, but at the same time, it's all about moving to the next play and uh, and hopefully learning from it and not letting it be like a boulder that you carry around the rest of the game because that leads to to, to that. And uh, but to, to let it go, learn from it, move on and have the next play, the next play mentality. And that's such that's such a big deal, just like at every position, you've got to do that, you know, because you can't 
you can't harp on mistakes just like none of us can. If we walked around all, all day worrying about all the mistakes we've made in our life, we wouldn't have very good days. But it's all about learning and moving forward, and, uh, and that's what we expect. Yeah, Danny Stussman seemed to be just all over the field the other day. Four TFLs, I think. Just yeah. what growth have you seen in his game uh, over the last few months? Uh, I've seen him get more comfortable in the system each and every week. Um, and you're right, he did play very fast and very physical the other night. And uh, that's the expectation level for him. Uh, and again, I know I keep saying the same thing, but I was really proud of the work he's put in off the field. And that's led to an increased understanding, which leads to an increased confidence, which leads to playing faster and more physical. And uh, that's, that's what he's done. Ted, I'm going to guess you've experienced a game in Lincoln at some point. I certainly have. I was at Penn State, okay, and I don't, uh, it was 2012, and uh, rolled in there. I'd never been there, and walk out on the field, and uh, in pregame, a big gust of wind happens. And my game plan flies out of my hands and goes up into the state into the stadium, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, because I had just come from the SEC where the, if that was the case, he, he, so anyway, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a fan, a fan, uh, this guy is like, coach, coach, he's got my game plan. He walks down to the fence, a Nebraska guy, and hands me the game plan back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which I, I would have never envisioned that. I'd never been in many stadiums without it. Maybe that'd be the only stadium that that would have happened. But, uh, yeah. The if the reputation is class, dude's class. That one guy certainly was. I, I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you, have you ever been involved in an interim situation like this? Like, not, not at the end of a year, but like in mid-season where you guys have to carry on? Involved, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was an interim guy, uh, so I have been in, involved in that. Um, What's that like? Uh, a lot of moving pieces, a lot of moving parts, a lot of different thoughts, emotions, trying to keep everybody together. Uh, but, you know, that, that's, that's how that goes. But, again, this week it's all about because we expect everybody's best, and uh, it's about getting, getting ready, our team ready to play our best. So, all right. Thank you all. Appreciate it.